Hello friends, welcome to our lecture today. In today's class, we'll be dealing with the breast anatomy. Breast anatomy. The breast anatomy is also called as what? The mammary gland. The breast is also called as what? The mammary gland. The mammary gland is also called as the breast. Introduction. The breast is present in both male and what? In female. But in male, it is what? It is more rudimentary. In male, it is more rudimentary. In female, it is well developed. In female, it also forms what? A sexual character in female. It also forms a sexual character in female. And is also used to feed newborn babies. It is also used to feed what? Newborn babies. The breast is a sweat gland. It's a what? Is a sweat gland or a sebaceous gland? The breast is a sweat gland or a sebaceous gland. That is what is known as the introduction of the breast. Right. The situation of the breast. Where is the breast actually situated? The breast is situated at the pectoral region. The breast is situated at the where? pectoral region in the anterior surface breast is situated at the pectoral region in the anterior surface next is the extent of the breast how is this breast extended how is the breast extended vertically and horizontally vertically it extends from what? Second to sixth rib. Horizontally, it extends from the lateral border of the sternum and ends at, where? at the mid axillary line. From the lateral border of the sternum, the sternum is that bone that is going to hold all your rib bones in place to form the thoracic cage, right? So the sternum, the lateral border of the sternum, so the mid axillary line is where the horizontal extent of the breast is. So if you have been asked a question to describe the extent of the breast, you actually see that vertically it extends from second to sixth rib and horizontally extend from lateral border of the sternum to mid axillary line. Right, so that is it. What are the deep relations in the breast? The deep relation in the breast are the pectoralis major muscle. Pectoralis major muscle, serratus anterior muscle, serratus anterior muscle, and external oblique muscle. External what? Oblique muscle. These are the deep structures related to the breast. Deep structures related to the. Take note that when when we ask when we actually discuss about the relation. We didn't ask the pectoralis minor muscle. The pectoralis minor muscle is hence not among the deep relation of the brain. So if you have an MCQ question that says that which of these muscles is not actually part of the deep relation of the breast, you actually say that pectoralis minor muscle is not actually part. But pectoralis major, serratus anterior and external oblique muscle is what is part of it. So these are the relations to the breast. After knowing the relations to the breast, next let's discuss about the structures present in the breast. So what are the structures that are actually present in the breast? If you are asked to describe the structure, what can you see? The structures present in the breast are actually three. They are our skin, parenchyma, and the stroma. The skin parenchyma and the stroma. The skin is the outer surface of the breast. It presents the nipple and the areola. The areola is the pigmented area around the nipple. Pigmented area around the nipple. It's usually what's dark. The parenchyma, parenchyma is the tubular areola gland. It contains lactiferous ducts. 
contains the lactiferous duct. This lactiferous duct has about 15 to 20 loops. Contains the lactiferous duct. This duct has about 15 to 20 loops. And this lactiferous duct actually dilate to cause to form what is called a lactiferous sinus. Right? So it presents about 15 to 20 loops and it also has what is called lactiferous sinus at its end. The lactiferous sinus is the point where breast milk is going to be stored. Point where breast milk is going to be stored is the lactiferous sinus. It also presents the <coughs> asina cell. Asina cell. This is what is about the parenchyma. What about the strobe? The stroma presents what the framework of the breast. Framework of the breast. The stroma presents the framework of the breast. It composed of adipose tissue and fibrous tissue. Composed of adipose tissue and fibrous tissue. The adipose tissue is actually known as fat tissue. Fibrous tissue is actually the ligaments. So the ligaments that hold the breast in place is called the suspensory ligament of copper. Ligament of what? Copper. Suspensory ligament of copper. This is the ligament that is going to hold the breast in place to the deep structure. The deep structure is also called as well the pectoral fascia. The deep structure or the deep fascia is also called as well the pectoral fascia. So don't confuse. If you, if you are asked to actually describe the pectoral fascia, know that it is also the deep fascia. Or if you are asked to actually describe the deep fascia, please take note that it is the same thing as well, the pectoral fascia. Note, the breast is actually divided into four quadrants by an imaginary line. Right, the upper, upper lateral, upper media, then we have lower lateral, and then we have lower media. We have lower media and lower lateral. So the breast is actually divided into four different parts by an imaginary line. Upper lateral, upper media, lower lateral, lower media. This upper lateral presents a protrusion called as the axillary tail of spines. Right, this protrusion is called as axillary tail of spines. Right, and there is a foramen in which this axillary tail of spines is going to travel within to enter what the axilla. So this foramen is called as a foramen of langa. Foramen of langa. So if we are asked to actually describe. What is the area through which the axillary tail of spines is going to pass through? You actually say that the answer is foramen of langa. This is the point where the axillary tail of spines travel through from the upper lateral aspect of the breast into the axilla of the breast. Right. So after knowing the structures present in the breast, what are the other good things that is supposed to be known about the breast? Because first we have discussed about the introduction. Next, we also discuss about the situation that the breast is situation at the pectoral region. And we also discuss about the extents of the breast, how the breast is being extended. We actually describe it as the vertical and the horizontal. Then we also discuss about the structures of the breast, right? The structures and the relations. So now, let's see the blood supply to the breast. How is blood being supplied to the breast? Blood supply to the breast is through the subclavian artery. Subclavian artery and through the axillary artery. The subclavian artery gives up a branch called as the internal thoracic artery. The subclavian artery gives up a branch called as well, the internal thoracic artery, which supplies the breast. The axillary artery gives up three different branches called as tracheoacromial branch, tracheoacromial branch, lateral thoracic branch, lateral thoracic branch, and what? Superior thoracic 
branch. So these are the branches arising from the axillary artery which is going to supply the breath. The one arising from the subclavian artery is called as the internal thoracic artery which is going to supply the breast. Right. And there's also another artery called as a posterior intercostal artery. Posterior intercostal artery which is also going to what, supply the breast. So these are the main arteries that is supplying the breast. Right. So what are the veins actually supplying the breast? Once there is a blood supply, once there is an arterial supply to any organ or any gland or any muscle, there is also a venous supply to that same or said tissue or gland or muscle. So what is the venous supply to the breast? The venous supply to the breast is actually a venous anastomotic network. For example, if this is the breast and this is the nipple, at this area, there is a anastomotic venous cycle around here. All the veins that is supplying the breast is going to come like this, diverge through and form an anastomotic network. Anastomotic venous network is called as what? Anastomotic, anastomotic venous network. So once they form an asthmatic venous network at this point, they are actually going to divide into two, which is called as the superficial and the deep. Divide into uh, the superficial and the deep veins. To divide into superficial and what the deep vein. The superficial is going to drain into the what to the internal thoracic vein. Internal thoracic vein and the word vein in the lower aspect of the neck the superficial vein drain into the internal thoracic vein and the vein in the lower aspect of the neck right but the deep vein is going to drain into what drain into the axillary vein deep vein drains into the axillary vein and what into the posterior intercostal vein intercostal vein so the axillary vein and the posterior intercostal vein is being drained by the deep vein by the superficial vein drains into the internal thoracic vein and the lower veins of the neck this is about the venous drainage to the neck to this is about the venous drainage to the breast after knowing the venous drainage what is now the nerve that is supplying the breast if you're actually asked in an exam to actually describe the nerve that is supplying the breast, the nerve supplied to the breast is the nerve supply to the breast is there is a branch that is coming from the intercostal nerve, right? There's a branch coming from the intercostal. This branch is called as the cutaneous branch, and this branch is located in the anterior and lateral aspect of this coastal surface so it is called as what and true and true what and true and true lateral cutaneous branch of the what of the fourth of the fourth to sixth intercostal nerve and true lateral branch of the fourth to sixth intercostal nerve this is the nerve that is going to do what? The nerve that is going to supply the, the breast. So if you are asking an exam, if you are asking an exam, what is the nerve that actually supplies the breast? You actually say the correct answer is antro and lateral aspect or antro lateral cutaneous branch of the photosis intercostal nerve. This is an important MCQ point. So take note of it. <laughs> Another thing that we actually need to know about the breast is the lymphatic drainage. What is the lymphatic drainage to the breast? The lymphatic drainage to the breast has actually works with two things. The lymphatic drainage actually works with the lymph node, lymph node, and what lymph plexus, lymph plexus actually work with lymph node and what lymph plexus the lymph node to the breast is actually the axillary lymph node 
the axillary lymph node is the main lymph node to the breast. The axillary lymph node is the main lymph node node to the breast. The axillary lymph node has branches as the anterior anterior branch or is called as the anterior lymph node. Anterior lymph node. You can also call it the anterior axillary lymph node. And then we also have the posterior axillary lymph node. We have lateral axillary lymph node, apical axillary lymph node, and what? We have anterior axillary lymph node, posterior axillary lymph node, lateral axillary lymph node, apical axillary lymph node, and finally we have the central axillary lymph node. So this is about the branches arising from the axillary lymph node, right? Then we also have other nodes in which the breast drains through. This node is very important to be noted. This one of them is called the cephalic lymph node. Cephalic lymph node. Or it is also called the delto pectoral lymph node. The cephalic lymph node or the delto pectoral lymph node. Then the next one is called as posterior intercostal lymph node. Posterior what? intercostal lymph node this is about the nodes in which the breast actually drains apart from the main lymph node which is called as the axillary lymph node so if you are being asked in an exam that what is the main um, lymph drainage to the breast you actually say that it is the axillary lymph node but it actually works mostly with the anterior what anterior axillary lymph node which is also called as the pectoral lymph node this is about the lymphatic drainage of the breast after knowing the lymphatic drainage of the breast let us also see the development of the breast how does the breast get developed how does the breast get developed the breast actually develops from what's a milk a milk line let's see the structure For example, this area is your axilla, and then this area is your abdomen, and this area is your groin. So, at this point, towards this point here, there is a milk line which has about seven breasts. So, there is a milk line which has about seven breasts. So, this line here is called as what? The milk line. Or, line of skulls, or the mammary reef. Right. So this line here is called as the milk line. So this milk line extends from the axillary region. This point is the axillary region towards the groin region. So this point is your groin. This point is the axillary region. So this milk line actually extends from this area to this area. And it contains what? Seven breasts, right? It contains seven breasts. So during intra-intrain life, the breast is going to develop at the fourth week. The breast is going to develop at the fourth week of intrauterine life. Fourth week of intrauterine life, right? Through or by the word ectodermal thickening. Ectodermal thickening is going to what? It is going to actually develop in the fourth week by the word ectodermal thickening of the milk line or the line of skulls or the mammary ridge. So once this um, milk line becomes sick in the breast is developed, but once they are developed, they actually disappear and remains the one at the pectoral region, right? In humans, they will all disappear and remain the one in the pectoral region. So the one in the pectoral region is the only breast that is going to remain. While in animals, just as dogs and other animals, the breast is, the seven breasts is still present. So this is what is about the development of the breast. There are also abnormalities that also uh, actually occurs during development of the breast. So let's see some of these abnormalities. What are some of these abnormalities that is actually going to happen? Some of these abnormalities. One of them we have the amastia. Amastia. This is lack of breast. There's no breast. No breast. Absence of breast. Atelia. Italia. This is absence of nipple. Then we have polymastia. 
Ulimastia, also have Polytelia. Polymastia, Polytelia. And we also have what is called as Kainakumastia. Polymastia, Polytelia, and Kainakumastia. Remember, a master has no breast. The individual has no breast. That's lack of breast. It tells you the individual with this defect has what? No nipple, but breast is present. Right? Polymastia, the individual has so many breasts. So many breasts. Or it is also called a supernumerary breast. Polytelia is called a supernumerary what? Nipple. Supernumerary. Nipple. Hippolytelia is also called as supernumerary nipple. Supernumerary nipple. Polymastia means supernumerary breast or so many breasts. Polytelia, so many nipple or supernumerary nipple. Then gynecomastia is breast being developed in male when male develop breast it is called as gynecomastia and this is actually an example of what Kleinfelter syndrome it's actually an example of Kleinfelter what syndrome this is what is about the abnormalities present in breast so let us see a uh, clinical anatomy of the breast carcinoma of the breast is usually present in what is called as the upper lateral aspect of the breast right we say that the breast is actually divided into four quadrants, right? That the breast is actually divided into four quadrants by an imaginary. The upper lateral, upper media, we have the lower media and the lower lateral. So, at this Upper lateral is where carcinoma of breast, cancer of breast is usually felt, right? Because it presents what the axillary talus spans, which pass through the foramen of langa, which is the opening. And in this point, it's closer to what the lymph node of the axilla. So once this axillary lymph node starts draining and cancer cell start passing through and enters through the talus spans into this breast, the first layer is going to reach is the area where the talus spans is present so the area it is present is the upper lateral so the upper lateral is where the cancer cell is usually present right so that is why cancer cell is usually found at the upper lateral aspect or upper lateral quadrant of the breast this is called as well the four quadrants of the breast quadrant one quadrant two quadrant three and quadrant four so the upper lateral aspect is where cancer is usually present let's see another clinical of the breast there's what is called as pew, pew the orange skin, pew the orange skin, right? This actually occurs when there is obstruction, pew the orange skin actually occurs when there is obstruction on the superficial lymph plexus, obstruction on the superficial lymph plexus is going to cause Pure the orange skin because when the lymph node cannot drain and there's what obstruction tumor of cell or tumor of cancer cell is going to cause folding of the skin over the area where it is present so that folding is going to cause an, an a yellowish color that is like that of an orange at the area so that color is usually called as pure the orange skin so it's usually present in the breast so pure the orange skin is caused by obstruction superficially this is what is about the clinical anatomy of the breast. So, so far, I've actually deal with the mammary gland. I've actually covered the mammary gland by knowing, I've actually covered the mammary gland by knowing its introduction, its situation, its extent of this. We also talked about the blood supply, nerve supply, we also talked about the lymphatic drainage, the venous drainage, and we also knew about some of the developments, abnormalities present in the breast, as well as its development. And we also talked about some of the clinical importance present in the breast.